Welcome to the first video of computer hardware series. This video is not intensified by the hardware, but of the way a PC works. What needs to be installed in a computer to be functional? What is hardware and software and where is the difference between it? Hardware is physically, so you can touch it. As example the computer itself, the computer mouse, the keyboard or the monitor. Software is all virtual, so things that exist only in digital world. There are programs on microchips or even on the hard disk. A good example would be Windows, a well-known program which is, strictly speaking, referred to as a operating system. More about that in another video. Or Adobe Photoshop, which is very popular with graphic designers. All of these programs you cannot touch, but not to the functioning of a computer. If you ask someone about the functioning of a computer, you will get to the point of the O's and the ones. And that's great, because the computer thinks only in this binary or dual system. Dual system is because it only knew one and O, so two characters, dual. Other types of systems would be the decimal system, which is used by humans, or the hexadecimal system, which consists of 16 characters and is also used in the computer technology. More in the video about different number systems. You could illustrate this at the mechanical way with a light bulb. If the switch is open, the light is out. This could be interpreted as a zero. If you now close the switch so the lamp will be illuminated, it corresponds to a one in the binary system. Of course there aren't thousands of light switches in a computer. This is taken by transistors. This metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, short MOSFETs, installed in 40 nanometer technology such as in the new Intel Core i7. But how does a transistor work? To explain this, first of all I should explain the term of a semiconductor. To create a semiconductor, silicon is usually doped. This in turn means that silicon is contaminated with other atoms, so that a n-typed or p-typed impurity is formed. N-doped semiconductors are usually made out of silicon and phosphor atoms. Since they are now more electrons, the semiconductor is negatively charged and called n-doped. If we add to the silicon aluminium, so some gaps arrays, so called holes, since electrons absence. The semiconductor is now p-doped because it is positively charged. In a MOSFET there are two highly n-doped regions, which are called source and drain. These islands are surrounded by a p-doped substrate, which at the edge of the p and n-doped region a neutral zone creates. Above that is still an insulating layer out of silicon dioxide. In the middle of these two contacts is the so-called gate, which controls where the transistor is now open, so switched through or closed. When no voltage is applied to the contacts of the gate, the transistor is closed, so the electrons cannot flow to the drain from the source terminal. But in case a strong positive charge applied to the gate, the p-doped holes would be pushed away so the electrons can flow from source to drain. The higher the voltage at the gate, the more electrons can flow simultaneously. These MOSFETs are used because they can switch 100 billion times per second. But only net, he is, as already said, very small. Now back to the light switches. The most commonly used logic circuits or logic gates are the AND gate and the OR gate. There is also a opposite version of this, NAND and NOR. An AND gate is created by two switches connected in row. 
This means that both switches must be pressed so the current can flow and the light illuminates. The OR gate also consists of two switches, which are elegant in parallel, so that it is sufficient to press one button to light up the lamp. With these two logic gates could be do math. More in the video about the number systems, binary systems. Now to another important block of a computer, storing the individual bits. A so-called RS latch is used for this. It could be built with two NAND or two NOR gates. In this example I use two NOR gates. S is the set, RS, reset, O for output and, and O line is the opposite of O. The RS latch acts simultaneously as a power switch of the most devices. If you push the switch, your smartphone will turn on. This corresponds to the set. Pressing the button again will turn the smartphone off. Reset. So with countless c transistors, resistors and other electrics, a working PC could be built. Now the last question. Which hardware is had to be built into a computer to turn it on? A computer can be powered on and off if a motherboard, a processor, some random access memory and some and a power supply is built in. But to work with a computer, a keyboard, monitor a, and hard drive would be useful. But don't forget the computer mouse. You can work with any computer without a mouse but it would be easier with it. So that's it for the first episode of the computer hardware series. Thanks for watching. Please rate the video if you liked it. Share it to your friends and subscribe for more. To be up to date visit the website of the channel. All links and information would be underneath in the video description.